Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're looking at the 2019 AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism uh, for response questions. And the College Board split it into Set 1 and Set 2, so these are the Set 1 questions. Um, as usual, uh, if there are any mistakes in here, I'll put uh, corrections in the description below, as well as there's links to where all the PDFs for all the solutions that I put together are. Um, so let's take a look at this question here. So um, a very long, thin, non-conducting cylinder of length L is centered on the axis shown, y axis shown above. The cylinder's uniform linear charge density plus lambda. Point P is located on the y axis, y equals C, where L is much, much bigger than C. So in the figure shown below, drawn indicate the direction of the electric field at point P due to a long cylinder. The arrow should start on and point away from the dot. So because this is really long, um, the electric field is pointing away from the positive charges directly upward. And we actually do this by symmetry. Um, it's actually not even because it's long, it's just due to symmetry. If I were to flip this thing over and around, uh, I would have the same picture. So if there were any, like say I thought it was, say I thought I had some horizontal component. If I flipped it around, uh, then it would look like it had like that. And then these are not equal, even though it's the exact same problem. So symmetry is a pretty powerful way to like see like why it would have to be vertically upward. Um, describe the shape and location of a Gaussian surface that can be used to make determine the electric field at point P due to the long cylinder. Um, I'm just going to draw it because uh, basically you can pick any any shape that has um, um, let's see some a really it would be like a really thin slice of something like something really thin like this. Like a rectangular box maybe and I would I would make it equal on both sides maybe or actually actually I have it go, I could have it go through the conductor that would be the easiest way to do it probably just have it go through the conductor like so and it would have a little bit of thickness here so thin that like it's infinitesimally thick so that's sort of my 3d shape that I would uh, kind of do uh, actually no actually sorry this, this probably not, that's one way to do it. Um, the way I ended up doing um, this simpler was to think, this thing has rotational symmetry. That means if I rotate it, the E field is just going to sort of circle around. So I ended up picking a cylinder that had a radius equal to C. Okay. So it kind of, if I look at it from the side, it looks like this. And so, in all directions, the E field should be the same value. And the reason it should be the same is because of a rotational symmetry. Like uh, if I rotate it, uh, the problem is still the same. So the E field should be radially outward from there. So in this case, and because it's all, um, because because I said symmetry, everything is vertical. There's nothing coming out of the sides. I only have to worry about the area on the side bands because there's no flux, no electric flu field flux going through the sides of the disk. And so the area, so the integral of, um, this is that Gauss's law, integral E dot dA is equal to the, the charge enclosed by epsilon naught. And so say this thing has a, a width of delta x, okay? This is the electric field just simply times the area of this. Well, let's see, this has a radius c, and the circumference of this is 2 pi c. And so 2 pi c times the thickness would be the area. So 2 pi c times delta x. That's the area. This is the area that we're talking about. Um, the enclosed charge, well, um, in this delta x region, we have a charge lambda delta x because it's a linear charge density. So I multiply by a width there I get over epsilon naught. And so I can, the delta x's cancel, and then my electric field would be uh, lambda over 2 pi c epsilon naught. So then a proton is released from point P. On the axis below, sc sketch the velocity v as a function of position, and the acceleration a as a function of position y for the proton. So here it's released from point P. So I put a proton right here. And what's going to happen uh, right here, and the proton's going to accelerate upward, right? 
So it's, it's going to have an initial velocity of 0, and it's going to accelerate upward. So point C has it 0 velocity, and then... So this electric field, now the, the, let's do the acceleration first. I think it's easier to do it that way. The force on the electron, electron is Q times the electric field, and that's Q times lambda over 2 pi C epsilon naught. So you see, um, the, 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 the accelerate, this is equal to um, ma. So the acceleration just divided by is q over m, lambda over 2 pi epsilon naught. And I'm going to actually use this as y instead of c. Because c was calculating at a specific point. But as, as you can imagine, if I change from c to a different value of y in the vertical direction, the electric field will decrease. So the electric field starts at... Um, you know, a value and it goes down as 1 over y. So it starts here and it goes like this. Okay, so this is a 1 over y relationship. Like that. Okay. Now, why don't I continue this graph? Why don't I? Well, the proton never actually is in this position because it's being pushed away. So I actually don't sketch anything before over here because it's saying it's released from rest at point, at point P. So it actually never exists. Uh, for y less than c because it gets pushed away. So the velocity starts at 0 and is simply the area under the curve. Um, and if I do an integral over 1 over y, it's ln of y, right? So it's going to start at 0 and then just extend upward like natural log of y. So this is ln of y. That's the general shape. Okay, um, so the... Did I do that right? Velocity is the integral of acceleration. Uh, it's the integral with respect to time. Um, but I think a times delta y is not going to be velocity. It's going to be, let me just make sure I want to get this right. The velocity definitely starts at 0. Do I have this relationship right? Now that I'm rethinking this, uh, velocity is the integral with acceleration with respect to time. How would I typically do velocity. Maybe I would look at the the potential and the work being done on the potential uh, as it's moving from, yeah, the work being done. So uh, instead of doing this, which was kind of how I originally thought about it, but maybe now that I'm rethinking it again, uh, velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to time, but this is a function of position. So it's not the integral of this necessarily, or I can't think of an immediate way why I would do the area of that. So instead, what I want to consider is the potential. Um, so the voltage, as it relates to the electric field, I just want to double check the equation. Uh, potential is integral of EDR. Negative integral. Is really negative integral E dot dr. Okay, in the electric field in the y direction, if I integrated this, so what's going to happen is the potential is going to decrease by the integral of this. And so the voltage is going to have some kind of dependency of ln of y, basically. And so that's the voltage. And then the velocity equals q delta v. And uh, so q times delta v, it, it, so that means the velocity is also, going, sorry, um, that's the work done. So 1 half mv squared is going to equal q delta v, right? And so v is going to have sort of a squ square root dependency on ln of y, which I still think looks like this shape, but it's just ln of square root of ln of y instead. Um, so I think it still has the same dependency, but it's just like it, it won't look that different from it, like in terms of a general sketch. So something like a curve like this makes sense. And and this this should match because the slope should just be decreasing, right? Like the slopes here are decreasing, so the slopes here are to, sorry, that's with respect to time. Ignore what I just said. See, I'm still getting confused between the integral and derivative because this is position, not, uh, not with respect to time. Okay, so the original cylinder is now replaced with a much shorter, thin, non-conducting cylinder with same uniform linear charge density plus lambda. The length of the cylinder to the right uh, is a, and the left where a is less than b. So just basically this picture. On the figure shown below, draw an arrow to indicate the direction of the electric field at point p due to the shorter cylinder. Um, so here the electric field has some horizontal component because there's no longer symmetry. And the reason it's, 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 it's the way I would think of it is this. If I included just the charge with a, this will create an electric field upward. 
but then I have all this other charge creating electric fields that are kind of pointing in all these directions. So there's going to be some component in the horizontal direction. Now the problem is you don't know what angle this is. You would actually have to do the integral. You would have to sum up the charge, sum up the electric field from these charges to actually calculate this. And so um, it, the question here, is there a single Gaussian surface that can be used with Gauss's law to derive an expression for an electric field at point P? I would generally say no. Now Gauss's law is technically always true and I can always do a surface integral to solve it, but, but it would be really tricky in a scenario like this and I don't think it would be very obvious, mainly because I don't know the angle with respect to this is. If I knew the angle, I could do a Gaussian surface, but in general, because I don't know this angle, um, that's why I really can't like create a surface and then find out how much electric field is going through. And I can't do my integral of e dot dA at least not particularly very easily. Okay, maybe there's a possible way to do it, but part two asks you if you think you can do it, you should do it. And if you were able to demonstrate some way that you did a surface integral uh, to get it, well, that's all the power to you. Like, then that would be great. But as far as I could tell, there's no simple way. And I would not, if I were to solve the electric field, I would not do a, a Gaussian surface and use Gauss's law. Um, so that is that one. So a student class argues that by using the integral shown below it might be a useful approach for determining the electric field. This is correct. This is how you would in general find the electric field. So he wants to do it in terms of the horizontal and vertical components separately. Also fine. One of the two equations above is not correct and which expression is not correct? Well there's a couple of things that are happening. So this one I'm integrating over dx and it generally looks okay. But immediately the one that's weird is uh, the bounds here don't match y. If I were to integrate over y uh, I would want to go from 0 to C, for example. So clearly, the vertical component equation is actually wrong. Okay. Now, to, to find out exactly what's wrong, I actually, you end up having to derive it, ultimately, is what you want to do. So, so let's, let's draw, so the electric field sticks out like this from every point. And um, so let's, let's draw the, the, the electric field here due to a specific linear charge density here located at located x with a charge with with a charge dq is equal to lambda dx okay and i would now, now compute what the electric field is um so the vertical component the y component here so there's a horizontal and ey the vertical component okay um would depend on the angle that this thing makes to, so let me just double check how I'm making the setup right. Yeah, so uh, if I were to sketch this out a little bit further, I would look at, actually let's, let's do it in this picture so maybe it's a little more obvious. So I'm gonna have a picture like this and I'm gonna talk about this linear charge density right here. This is an arbitrary location that I picked, okay? Now as you can see, this linear charge density is gonna create an electric field in this direction. So I need to know sort of something about the, the length, it, like if this is location x, I need to know something about this angle here. And one thing I can say is like, well, um, if I wanted the, the vertical component, ey is equal to e times sine of theta, right? Where e is sort of the actual electric field pointing in the diagonal direction. But what is sine of theta? Well, if I look at this, this triangle here, sine of theta is opposite over this distance. So this opposite distance is c, and this distance is square is the hypotenuse, and the square root of a squared plus uh, c squared. So sine theta would be e times uh, c over the square root of x squared plus c squared, because that's what sine of theta would be, right? Sine of theta would be this over this, and these are similar triangles. So that's the that's the uh, electric field. Oh, sorry, uh, that's the electric field here. So what is this? that's the, the vertical component, what is the electric field equal to? Then I just use my equation. Um, the electric field from a little point charge, it would be one over four pi epsilon naught um, um, dq over the distance squared, r squared. Um, r squared is x squared plus c squared because it's the distance that the charge is away from the point. 
And yeah, so this is the electric field, and then I got to multiply by my c over the square root of x squared plus c squared. Okay, so this is my portion of the electric field due to this linear charge. And so then I want to integrate all of this. Well, I replace dq with lambda dx. So this is lambda dx c over 4 pi epsilon naught x squared plus c squared times the square root of uh, x squared plus c squared. And so um, then this becomes the 3 halves, so it becomes the integral. Uh, let's bring all the constants out in front. Lambda c over 4 pi epsilon naught. And I would have dx over uh, x squared plus c squared to the 3 halves. And so then the bounds of the integral, x is going to range from uh, negative b to a. So this would be the correct integral setup for it. Just double check that I did that right. Mm -mm, yep. Uh, so what are the two mistakes? One, um, this y dy is, is 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 incorrect. I mean, like if I like like this denominator is incorrect, right? This should be c squared plus x squared to the three halves, and then the y dy ought to be just simply c times dx instead. So this should be c dx, and then this is three halves. So that's that's the fix to that integral. And coincidentally, like um, um, all you do for the x direction is I make cosine of theta, so it becomes cosine of theta. And cosine of theta is um, x over x squared plus c squared. So that's why like this just becomes an x and everything else is the same. Okay, so um, uh, hope you found that helpful. Um, leave a comment if you have any questions or you think I did something wrong. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.